first soup in the morning. <laughs> that was Sarah. Dark rye bread, sour cream. My grandmother. I tried her soup one time. I must have been six or seven, thinking I'd like it because it was such a pretty pink. Cold pureed beet. Ugh, nasty. But at least she could cook. You think good food tastes good? Food is to make strong. Every day I eat this. My mother show me. Trick is to grind beets in large bowl till becoming lots of little beets. Then cook till making soup. Pinch of salt, pepper, milk to thicken. Every day I do this, 93 years. And not once do I like taste. Eh, people are just. She was 16 when she came to America. Actually, I was 15. A real Russian peasant. I was peasant. My family worked on farm. Ah, not just any farm, farm of great family. Her people were serfs on the farm of a famous Russian family. A great name. Yeah, our literary roots run deep. We shoveled horseshit for the Tolstoys. People are just. She made the crossing in 1900 by boat. Can you imagine? And only 16. Actually, I was 15. Well, more than 15, but less than 16. Closer to 15, and I did alone. I can't even send my kids to school by themselves. Ah, it was a beautiful boat, <laughs> the Night Scotsman. I took take train from uh, Moscow to Marseille. I thought it strange, English boat sailing from France to America my first multicultural undertaking. And I did great thing on both. She taught the ship's cook to make borscht. She was just a kid. <laughs> like I said, Sarah could work the kitchen. Not like... My Jenny, your mother. <laughs> she never learned cooking. She made meal once, some funny looking noodle frozen tortellini. Didn't even cook it. Just poured the package on top of a bed of iceberg lettuce and served with pine nuts. E, E, E. That's what we do. <laughs> Nobody starved in my house. Besides, I was a war child, born during the first, came to age during the second, with a depression in between. Who had time to cook fancy? There is one thing, though, that we have in common. Soups. Soups. The women in our family make soups like nobody's business. I always do this. Cupboards full of nothing and an empty fridge. I always do this. Make something out of nothing. It's in blood. People even eat my soups, and they're not just being polite. <laughs> My family always making soup. Back to when before I could remember. Pogroms, no food, make soup. Shoah, no food, make soup. Purchase, no food, make soup. We survive. Women and family love all kinds of soups. Except Borscht. <laughs> Except borscht. People adjust. There are no recipes. Nothing written down. It's all up here. And here. Who has time to write things down? It'd be nice. My, my girls having recipes from Bubba Sarah. I never learn writing. Uh, English, Russian, Yiddish, but no writing. But I speak all three. I miss the language. I grew up with it. Day to day, it was Yiddish in our house. 
And Russian, when Mama and Papa got mad. Uh, good curses in Russian, strong and to point. Plus, don't want to disrespect mother tongue by making bad talk. I never knew the language. I heard people when I was young. <laughs> they used it to say stuff they didn't want me to hear. After Papa died, Mama refused to use it. In English, she'd say, you American girl speaking English. The language was their link to the old country. And after he passed, I think she wanted to keep that special for herself. Actually, I love learning English, watching television. How they call them? Uh, soap operas. Strange name, I think. No soap, no singing, but shows lots of fun. And women in shows, maybe not so good at making soup, but very good at making trouble. Mom told me a great Sarah story about when Mom got married. We didn't have any money. Who did at that age? So, of course, my Jack and me had decided to live with my parents in the spare bedroom upstairs. You know, save up some money of our own so we could get a nice place. Mom and Dad loved to save money. And it wasn't that they were cheap. I can't count the number of times they've helped us. No, they just loved a bargain and coupons. Found money, if you ask me. They'd cut coupons, then head out to the drugstore to buy whatever item was on sale. Batteries, big pens. We came up in hard times. People couldn't find work in the 30s, let alone feed their families. We had to use ration cards. Can you imagine? Then they'd go to a different store the next day, coupons in hand, to buy more pens and batteries. Didn't matter we had a drawer already packed full of double A's, C's, D's, whatever. My daughter doesn't understand. Coupon shopping was entertainment for them. Taking their time with it. All afternoon, picking out just the right pen. They shopped like turtles. Slow and steady. <laughs> I thought we were talking about my wedding night. Uh, mm. Very important night for lady. Maybe it's not so much now, but back then was night when lady discover uh, how they say it in soap operas. <laughs> if man they spend rest of life with good in sack. <laughs> Sarah had these bells. A string of sleigh bells attached to a leather strap. And we get into bed at the end of what any bride will tell you is a long day. With Papa and me downstairs, listening and giggling like school children. And when we start to, you know, well, she had tied those freaking bells. To the mattress underneath the bed. And we hear jingle, jingle, jingle. Ugh. My husband was furious. He wanted to move out that night. I told him, where can we go? Next morning at breakfast, Papa and me, we were talking and... Break I... out in peals of laughter while humming jingle bells. Suddenly, Jack, Jenny's brand new bridegroom, shouts. Enough with the Christmas song. We're Jewish already. And you know what Sarah told him? People are just. There was lots of Russian in the house that morning. Women and family might not write things down. And we may not always agree on what makes a great soup. But there is one recipe we all agree on. List of ingredients most necessary. In that all-important main course. Men. Men. He's got to have more than just a pinch of humor to survive in our family. He's got to give love as much as we give and more. Must like soups. And family. Children. 
And let's not forget that secret ingredient. Must be good in sack. People, People adjust. adjust. We've all worked Love's Kitchen just fine. I married 68 years. 63 for Jack and me. Most years, happy ones. Just had my 20th anniversary. Some sad, some angry. All of them worth it. Good marriage, like good soup. Keep mixing ingredients, changing recipes when taste changes. If need sweet, add sugar. If too bland, add spice. The women in our family are great. I miss and love the ones who've left. We lost Sarah when I was 16. The same age she was when she came over from Russia. Actually, I was 15. My mom moved in with us after Dad passed. She argued it would be too much bother looking after a doting old woman. But I had her cold telling her the same thing she said when Sarah moved into Mom's house. We don't do nursing homes in this family. I have two girls of my own. I teach them soup and tell them the old stories. Sarah's journey across. <laughs> the letter Dad sent Mom while they were engaged. He wrote, I love you, but I can't marry you. I'm too much of a hedonist to settle down with one woman. That's when I knew he had that special ingredient. <laughs> Someday I'd like to write it all down. The stories, the soups, even the borscht. Get it on paper for my kids. I never seem to get around to it. But I'm not really worried they'll miss anything. Like Sarah used to say, it's in our blood. There is one story, though, that I'm saving. Like I said, my daughters are young, and those sleigh bells are in the back of my closet waiting. People adjust.